Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Cheyenne. Really appreciate it. So I'm going to get into the talk so that I can hopefully don't go past my 10 minutes. You started it too early. You just, you know. Anyway, today we're going to talk about MLE, which is manual lipidema extraction. And this is one of my, um, one of the things I love talking about. I have no disclosures. However, I do have a caveat, and that is at the beginning here, I am going to take the, I'm going to take some time to talk about a few of my opinions in, um, in lipedema. And so these are not in part of the standard of care. They're sort of, I, I've had the pleasure of taking care of a lot of people, and I spend a lot of time thinking about this. So again, these are my thoughts and my opinions. Maybe they'll stir a debate, maybe not, but again, these are just for me. So everybody has probably been um, learned, if you haven't, that we have stages lipedema. Actually, we know. Everybody knows about them. Everybody knows that you talk about stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four. The reason I put this up here is I actually truly don't believe in the stages of lipedema. The reason is the stages are pretty rudimentary. You know, somebody, somebody says, well, your skin isn't so bad, so you're stage one, or your skin is really bad, and you're stage three, or you have some lymphedema, so you're stage four. My problem with that is that it doesn't take into account the things that I think were really, are really important and the reason why we're treating lipedema, and that is the pain mobility, the activities of daily living. I mean, none of, that is, none of that is incorporated into this. The other thing is volume doesn't correlate with pain. Somebody comes in with legs like mine and I say they're stage one, does that mean they're not as bad as somebody that's stage three? Anyway, and the last part is insurance. My, my thing I worry about the most is that we're gonna say stage one, and you're gonna submit it to the insurance company, say it's stage one, they're gonna say wait till it gets to stage four or so. Anyway, those are my thoughts on that. Same thing with the types. I'm just going to do this part pretty quickly. Um, there are the different types. I keep mine pretty simple. Um, I look at, I break it down between centralized and classical. Again, these are how I look at it. Classical, you get the bilateral symmetrical legs with the cuffing. Centralized, the reason I put this up here is I think I see more of this, to be honest with you. And what you see here is that it doesn't really involve the ankles as much, so people can wear skirts and, and everything. But they really hold in the upper thighs, the midsection. I think there's a high propensity to have it in the arms as well. And it's harder to sleep with this one because that's where all the pain is. But the reason I show this is I also get concerned somebody's not going to get diagnosed with lipedema because they don't have the cuffing around the ankle. I'm actually going to skip some of it. Anyway, lipedema is not fat. Please don't think of it as fat. It, it, we have to treat it other ways. And you've learned so much of that here. And my last thing that I tell everybody, BMI, I can't use bad words, BMI is not a great number, especially as it comes to lipedema. I don't think it should be even in the, in the picture. Problem is, BMI does not correlate with anything in terms of lipedema. There's no way you're gonna say that you have to get down or lose weight or something like that. What I talk to people at surgery though is that higher BMI does have higher complications. And those are the things we talked about prior. We, what I always tell people whenever you're doing surgery, it's risk versus benefit. So the risk is there is a higher complication rate, but the benefit in the long run, if you see how well people do, it, it, it really is worth it. Of course, it's a personal conversation, but I really, really think it's important to think about things that way. So what is going on? The best part about this slide is I was gonna explain exactly how we get to this whole thing, but Dr. Herbst did more of an amazing job of it, and she had 30 minutes, so it, we really, I can kind of, I'll put this up here. The one thing I want to focus on is I tell everybody, and the way I think of lipedema, I think of it as an inflammatory process. I think it's all about inflammation. I think it's how we're reacting to it. I think it's how, it's just everything that you're seeing in the body. And so I always think about it that way. Even, um, to be honest, even compression. I, I tell people compression, it's like by athletes wearing. Some people say they wear compression and it didn't work, it didn't get smaller. Athletes wear compression because it decreases inflammation, decreases swelling, recovery time. And when people do that and wear it, that's when they start feeling better. So that's if you think about it as an inflammatory process. This is one of my favorite slides. Actually, my wife found this one. Um, if you look at the fat biopsy on the right side, that's normal fat. Let's, let's say that's mine. So tonight, I eat cheeseburgers all night. And uh, my body's going to take all that fat, turn it into triglyceride, and store it. Those cells are look uniform. It's going to store it all the same way. If you look at the lipedema biopsy, I mean, you can just look at how irregular it is. We call it adipocyte hypertrophy and hyperplasia. And what that means is you get cells that are larger and you get more of them. All the pink staining, purple staining you're seeing, that's a lot of other cells, like scavenger cells. You can tell there's just a lot of inflammation going on there and it's totally not a normal process. This is what I think lipedema comes down to. Now, 
from a surgery standpoint and treatment standpoint, not from everything else. It's all about the nodules for me. It's all about what our bodies are creating from that inflammation. If you look at them, you can look at, like on the left side, you have really large nodules. That middle one there, it's supposed to be a video, but it's me squeezing it. They're pretty firm, they're pretty hard. If you look at the far right side with all those nodules and the ruler, I call, that, I call those people givers, meaning we're getting a lot of hundreds and thousands of these out during surgery. But more importantly, this is what you have to treat in order to make people feel better. If you take a look at these, so we're gonna talk on the right side first. The right side is a patient that I already finished the lymphatic sparing liposuction. In fact, if you look at the, if you look at the little um, incision, there's a little um, dark thing through there. That's actually, a, a, that's actually a small blood vessel, a small vein, and it's still intact. So the surgery is pretty gentle. But look when you squeeze the skin, look what's still there. It's all the nodules are still there. The left side is one of the largest Durkham's nodules I've ever removed from someone. I started at her forearm and got one that was half that size, and I thought that was the winner. Then as we moved up to the arm and I found that, and so this is what you're seeing inside people. And this is what really we need to get out in order to treat this. Oh, if you look, I know these are, by the way, I know these are graphic and I'm sorry about that, don't look, but I just, um, I, I think it's important to see what's actually going on inside so you understand. Before you ever do surgeries, treatments, I think you should understand what we're seeing and what we're doing. If you look on the left side there, you can see it's full thickness nodules. I mean, there's nothing, nothing normal, no more normal tissue in there. But what's interesting for me, if you look at sort of the whitest, um, the whitest tissue here, at the, the whitest tissue here at the bottom, that's called your deep fascia, your muscles underneath there. So what we're seeing is you're seeing all your connective tissues really becoming softer. You're seeing muscles not functioning. Biomechanically, your fascia holds muscles and it holds everything. So when you're walking, there's locomotion. We're not seeing that. You see a very, very weak fascia, and it's hard to even find anything that's like normal. If you look at the right side, it would have been a terrible video, so Cheyenne's happy that it's not a video right now, but essentially that's us doing the procedure. That's us getting this out. But when you look at this and you know what's inside, all you know is you want this out. This is actually something that I, I found really, really interesting. So. After I did the lymphatic sparing liposuction, we pulled out the nodules. I pulled out this nodule and I found a hole in it, right in the center. And that's a liposuction cannula hole, meaning the cannula went through that nodule but did not get that out. And the first time I saw that, I was, I mean, I, I, I know people feel better, I know we're doing the right thing, but when I saw that, it just really kind of clicked for me, so. If you look at the left side here, I call that the candy cane. <laughs> and the reason is the, the tissue that we're getting out is really thick, it's really white, it's really hard. And you get that with a little bit of fluid, you can see how like, kind of thick and chunky it is. With that, it looks like candy cane. But more importantly, on the right side, it's a video, but I'm actually pulling, grabbing and, let's say, I won't use the word ripping, but we're grabbing and pulling a nodule out from inside. And that's how attached they are. This is sort of when you see kind of the end of the surgery, the left side, when you see that with the amount of tissue that's in there, the, it's just, anyway, I'm gonna say, I, I got a few more, but that's what you gotta get out of people and that's, what, that's when people feel better. But this is not a cosmetic procedure. It's not cosmetic at all. We don't even focus on that, but this is one of our patients from Canada that took her own before and afters and she was happy. As you all know, I think insurance should really be covering this. I think we've spent a lot of time speaking with most major insurers in the US. Um, we're all trying. This is on our website. It's a, it's a checklist, so you can go through it. You can see what you kind of need in order to start hopefully getting insurance coverage. But it's there. Any questions you have, just always let us know. And as you all have learned, we have a team, and, and the team has really made, each of us has made the other better, and so we, we keep expanding what we're doing. We're getting better care for our patients by looking at a comprehensive approach. And honestly, it makes us all extremely, extremely happy. Um, anything we could ever do, just please let us know. And I, I truly appreciate your time today. Thank you.